It's been a little over a year yeah. since you were on WBZ. It's wild it's been that long, but yeah. it also doesn't feel like that long. Right. I mean, the last day I was there, it was such, I didn't know that was gonna be yeah. that last moment um, for the time being, because that afternoon, we brought Declan to get an MRI and sure enough, uh, found out he had a brain tumor. And so from there, we went straight into Boston and got it removed to find out that it was cancerous, medulloblastoma, stage four. So we then knew that we went to the Jimmy Fund and wanted to get the best treatment we possibly could. And that meant that we had to be in the hospital for nearly nine months doing six rounds of chemotherapy as well as um, three rounds of stem cell transplant. So as much as that has been a blur yeah. the last 13 months, you said you've had to take it day by day too. Yeah, because every day came with something new, uh, something that we weren't expecting. Um, you know, with the chemotherapy regimen that he was in, he ended up getting some brain damage. Um, and now he has lingering impacts, even though he's done with his first protocol. Um, he's lost some of his hearing. He lost um, some of the use of his vocal cord at one point. He has had some mobility issues, his mood, his irritability, um, and cognitive delays. So now we are working with a different kid than we had 13 months ago. Um, but what we also, trying to strive past those things that are, you would think slow him down, he is persevering. Sure. Um, but our team also believes that this kind of cancer, it comes back. In fact, they said it never does, not for his type. So we are on a clinical trial and that means that he's still in treatment. Um, we visit the Jimmy Fund often. We go down to Rhode Island, Hasbro. Um, I administer him lots of medication every single day. I feel like I've become a nurse in the last 13 months. I know more medical terms than I want to. Sure. And I am inspired by him every day. Sure. So yes, day by day, because I don't know what the day brings. Will it bring a good day? Or will it bring these tantrums that he tends to have over the silliest stuff, but his mind can't help it. Sure. And so I have to remind myself, that's the chemotherapy. That's, that's the toxicity of a treatment to help a child with cancer. They don't have a better solution yet. So um, it's hard. And then we could be going to doctor's appointments or therapy. The good silver lining, I guess you could say, from that toxic um, or that toxicity is that we are hoping that over time therapies will allow him to get better and his white matter shouldn't be progressive. So um, the white matter changes in his brain that is called that brain damage. Um, they should be stable. We just hope that he doesn't have to go on a different chemotherapy that could cause further brain damage. What has it been like seeing your other kids rally around and help deck out? Sometimes I wish they'd help out a little bit more. <laughs> sure. But they're kids. No, I mean, they've been amazing. Um, you know, I think when he finally came home, it was a different uh, way of playing because now he needs a walker to get by. And so instead of running around, they'd be at his level. They'd crawl around or they'd make sure that if they were going downstairs, someone was picking him up and bringing him downstairs. If we're going out, I mean, we have a trampoline in our backyard and he wants to get in there just as much sure. as his older siblings. And as long as they know to be gentle, like if it brings a smile to his face, I'm gonna give him that smile because he deserves it. He's gone through hell and he deserves every right to smile every day. What has, I mean, when, when we last talked, it was the start of football season yeah. uh, last year. Yeah. And Waltham was holding their uh, childhood cancer awareness game. It was really sort of the, the start of a journey that was really uncertain at a time. And it's still uncertain to some extent. It's still a journey. It's still a journey. That team still holds Declan close to them. They say his name every single game. They made him honorary captain for their first home game. And they all went up to him and gave him knocks. They are inspired by him. And it's not just on the field, it's off the field. These kids are doing amazing things. There is so much good that has come from Declan's diagnosis. 
oh, I got chills because these kids are learning how to be empathetic and also to just be good people. And that's what I've learned in the last 13 months. There are so many good people. Just be a good person. Yeah. It really, truly has an impact one way or another. You don't even realize it. And um, people have been so good to us. Friends, family, coworkers, this community. This community is everything. Right. Um, don't cry. I, don't I, make me cry. Correct. It's hard, I know. It's, it's, I miss you guys. That's, I think, a really hard part, too, is because there's Sarah, the meteorologist, and Sarah, the mom, and we like to... To be fair, <laughs> it's always been Sarah, the super mom, also on the side. You are a meteorologist. It's yeah. always been a super mom with you. Yeah, but I've had to take it to the next level. Sure. But as far as the Sarah meteorologist goes, we miss you. I miss work. And, and everyone asks, are you coming back? What's your deal? And just like I've gone the last 13 months... I'm going day by day. Yeah. The last 13 months, from when he was diagnosed to through the treatments, it's put a toll on our family. It's put a toll on me, my mental health. Um, there's been a lot of things that I've realized over the last 13 months, a lot of things where I need to put my focus into. And while I still care about the weather every day right now, day by day, he's my number one priority. And I have to focus on that to get him better because I just want him to be here. Yeah. And I'm giving everything I have to him and my family. Maybe not myself, and I need to work on that. That's, that's the hard part. You see yeah. what he's going through. And I think as parents, we would do anything to take that pain. Yeah, like why yeah. him? Right? Yeah. You know? And as a parent, you can't. You can't think of that though. Like in my mind, like, you can't say why did this happen or how could this happen? It happened. Yeah. Now we need to move forward yep. day by day. Right. And the tomorrow, beginning. maybe a better day than today. And if that's the case, then we're winning. And right now, he's winning the last 13 months yep. because it could have ended, but it hasn't. And so with everybody and the strength of the community and love and support, I'd say he's thriving yeah. and he's going to. He's going to kick cancer's butt. I hope so. I love that. I love that. And we're still doing the thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. I mean, he does it all the time and he's really still excited sometimes when like he gets his favorite food or sees something. He goes, mommy, I'm happy and gives me a big thumbs up. It, it, it inspires him when he sees other people doing thumbs up. Um, it brings a smile and that smile then triggers into a good moment and that good moment may be a good afternoon and that good afternoon may become a good day and so yeah we uh, we're proud of him we still have a lot of things down the line um, to support him and also support all of the amazing nonprofits that have been like have helped us um, and so we're excited that we're finding ways to give back to the community one time when we talked, you had said that weather will always be a passion, but you're almost kind of shifting your focus, obviously with Declan, but you said you know more medical terms than you wish you knew. Do you see yourself in the future being an advocate for pediatric cancer or something like that? I don't look too far into the future. I really don't. Because right now I have to focus on today and I have to focus on tomorrow. And I'm not sure what my future holds. I still have a passion for weather. I can't imagine not going back to forecasting. But I also do see a purpose in helping other families navigate through something like this. Because a lot of times they don't have anybody. Yeah. And what we've learned is the community, people helping out, it's just... It's a good thing, and I, I just also feel like I've learned so much more than I, like I said, I needed to know, but I wanna be that person for somebody else as well. I don't know, Jacob. It's hard because I never asked for this. Um, I think when you ask yourself if you look into the future, 
things change. Ask anybody, has their plans changed? Sure. They do, but I just don't know. One thing you mentioned earlier was that doctors say it has never not come back, the type of cancer that he has. Is it hard hearing that and oh my holding out the hope that you do? Um, when we heard that, um, it was tough. Water filled my husband's eyes and I just grabbed his hand and said, we continue because we have nothing else to do but move forward. Yeah. So I don't think about that as much because yes, his type of cancer with the gene that amplifies tumor growth, which they don't know how to shut off, that puts him in a very low percentage of survival. But 13 months later, he's walking around, we're, we're hopeful with this new clinical trial. I can't, I've got to go day by day. So a lot of people say, oh, so he, he's beat cancer. No, he hasn't. He's not done, not by any means. He may not have any evidence of disease right now, but he gets MRIs every three months. Um, we are still fighting this battle. And it will be ongoing. It will be, at least for the next 18 months for this clinical trial, and then we'll see from there. So <laughs> there's no plans to stop. We're busy. <laughs> busy. He's busy, but he's amazing. Yes. He's going back to school and hopeful that he can finally get some normalcy. We missed this last year. Sure. And our family, the kids getting normalcy. They didn't have that either, you know? We're back together as a family and that's really what's important right now. Absolutely. Well, we love you so much. You know that. I miss You're you guys. You're so missed. And I, and I hope that things change sooner and you know, I'll be back forecasting with you guys and I just, right now, Beck needs me. And we know that. We know that. There is no place that we'd want you more than beside deck and, and with your family. Yeah. Mm. I miss you. I miss you too. Oh.